I'm Nicholas Penrake and you're listening to A Trader's Life, the podcast where I get to talk to successful traders about their approach to trading, how they started out and went from broke or breaking even to pulling in thousands of dollars a week. Trading is a tough game. They say only around 5% of those who try actually make a profit. Join me for A Trader's Life to glean some valuable insights from the market wizards I get to talk to. My guest today is Nilton Fernandez, an English trader who works out of Switzerland, who started his life professionally in IT and now is trading full time. So hi, Nilton. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Nick. Yourself? Yeah, I'm fine. Very rainy here today in uh, London. How about you in uh, Switzerland? Um, yeah, cloudy today, fresh, but um I quite like it like that. Went managed to go for a nice run this morning. So oh, that's um, good. Yeah. So, yeah. Quite like the cold, to be honest. Yeah. And, and where are you based? Uh, I'm based in a town called Ebicon, which is about 10 minutes out from Lucerne, which is one of the main cities. So, yeah. Yeah. And you work in IT normally, right? Yes. Uh, I worked for a company called Schindler Group. Um, so I was a solution architect there. Been working in IT for around about you know, about 10 years. And then unfortunately, uh, due to organization changes, my contract got terminated and with the pandemic and everything. So yeah, uh, I find myself solely trading now. So yeah. Yeah. And so how did you get into it and, and when? Uh, it's a funny story actually, because I had a friend who was interested in making some money on the side and, you know, I, I, I said to him, why, why don't you give it, uh, give trading a go? And you know he failed to to capitalize on the the links that I sent him, and then you know after looking at the links, I thought, well, let, let me see if I could <laughs> see how that yeah. yeah, and from there it just took off. Uh, fell in love with it, and um, been trading for around about three years now. Yeah. So, talk me through some of the early experiences. I, I imagine you had a good bit of luck at at some point and then <laughs> the inevitable losses along the way as well yeah i mean we start with the um with the losses first i think yeah uh, being a new trader you, you're sort of keen to get stuck in and make some money but um I, I sort of fell short a couple of times um and i was you know going through my account quite quickly because i wasn't really following the rules it's quite easy just to um sort of think what what the market's going to do. So, you know, I yeah. was trained by the online trading Academy to follow my rules. And because you get so sucked into the, the actual trading and the activity, you think, Oh, well, I, you know, I think that's going to go up. And a lot of yeah. the times I was placing trades thinking I knew, I knew better than the markets and came unstuck. Um, and then it got to a point where my account was really dwindling. And I thought, you know, this, you know, you have to really grasp the concepts yeah. And take your time with the training. So I managed to do that and through grit and determination, you know, I've had losses along the way, but I'm now profitable. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So what, what was your turning point perhaps? Uh, um, my turning point was when, when my account was in the red and it was around about a year after taking my first asset class that I decided, you know, to go back to basics. I went back to sim trading and, you know, I, I attended as many classes as possible, and it's at that point when I started to see a profit. So, um, yeah. What well, What do you think uh, helped you turn that around in terms of you know more specifically? What was it in the training that helped you with that? Um, was it my, indicators? Was it you know a combination of indicators? Yeah, it, was, it was a combination of watching specific traders, professional traders, and you know, homing in on my zone techniques. Um, I mean, the zones that I were picking were somewhat out of, um, or not in the correct sort of zone in which they look for. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just homing in on my skills, my zoning skills, and watching specific traders, I would say. Um, you know, the, there were so many traders that had all their different strategies, but, I sort of adapted myself to certain traders, which I liked. I liked the way they they they, they mark their zones out. They done their technical analysis, and then I, I I narrowed it down to about three traders that I continually watch now. 
Okay, so do you mean like on YouTube or is it a, no, paid, no, so, a paid academy? Or yeah, it's a it's a paid academy. It's the online trading academy. So they have every week they have a number of uh, extended learning tracks which you can just jump on, watch what they do, uh, learn the strategies that they trade with, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was the main turning point. Just yeah. really getting stuck in with this kind of training and uh, then following one or two traders you thought sort of suited your style. Yeah, I was um, because I was working at the time, it was quite hard to just juggle between attending these classes. And, you know, by the time I got home, I was pretty tired and I never really dedicated myself. Uh, but now I'm, you know, I'm very regimental. I get up, I, you know, I look at my calendar, see what courses are on or what asset classes are on and i mark it in my calendar and then you know 100 percent, i watch them depending on the on the on the trader itself so yeah and is that mainly forex or do you do other I have classes? forex um futures are the ones i actively trade i i know how to trade stocks but obviously you need a big account size for that yeah and options is the other class that i've i've learned um but i need more okay. experience with that yeah, it's trickier, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, a lot more tricky, a lot more yeah. moving parts. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then, then you get to spread betting and all that kind of yeah, yeah, credit spreads and yeah, even more complicated. <laughs> that will take time, I think. I'll give myself yeah. six months to learn that. So yeah, 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 yeah. So, did do you have any kind of financial experience beforehand, or is it purely IT and purely and then, IT? Yeah, purely mm. IT. And you know, I used to look at the charts and i used to say to myself oh, what does what's what does all that mean and you know look, when you turn on the news channels and stuff you see some stock indexes i never really had an interest until i actually went to one of the uh, introduction courses uh, back in england and then from then on i fell in love with it yeah yeah now how much money did you allot for trading when you first started out um so i put around about Three thousand in my no, maybe six thousand in my forex. Yeah, and, yeah. And for my futures, I had around about fourteen. Oh wow! Yeah, okay, quite a sizable so got, amount. So it was, it was it was really dwindling at one point, and then you thought, right, I can't yeah, let this just disappear. I've got with, to. With the get, futures, get I was a little bit more a little bit more um, cautious with because obviously the volatility within futures is is better is a lot. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. in forex so uh my account was dwindling in my forex uh, in my forex account mm. the futures i was a little bit more cautious with because i wanted to make sure that the forex was working before i started looking at uh the futures and you know there's so many products and they all trade differently so yeah 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 when you say which like futures for the typical ones like oil and oil gold. Um, yeah the equities Gold, silver, platinum, uh, yeah. heating oil, all the metals, that, yeah, yeah, metals, and yeah, not really yeah. trading the agricultural uh, products. I don't yeah. really tend to look at them, but I don't want to spread myself too thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Did you ever reach a point with you know going back to your sort of bad experiences early on uh, when you thought maybe trading's not for you? You thought I had enough, <laughs> pack up. I mean, there, there was a point, but I invested so much in myself that I thought you know. Milton, you have to make this work. And, for, yeah. you know, having that in the back of my mind and the amount of money that I spent, yeah. you know, I've just... Yes, it's, you're all in sort of thing. I'm all yeah. in. So it was just down to determination and working out what went wrong, what I can do better Yeah. to finally yeah. actually see trades coming in and, you know, I know what I'm looking for now, so... Yeah, yeah. Do you think discipline was a really key part in enabling you to take trades that were more profitable yeah sort of sense of yeah discipline yeah yeah one key component my earlier on my discipline was like i said it was non-existent it was you know you do the first couple of steps but then afterwards you see the you see the charts and you think oh that's going to go down or whatever. yeah but and then it would turn against you but now i'm very disciplined so I yeah. do my I do my steps and then if it looks good then I'll take the trade if it doesn't then I move on to the next yeah and you you're very strict with the stop loss and take profit and that yeah. kind of thing yeah 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 so I yeah, know yeah. my risk on the, on each trade target yeah so what's a typical day look like i mean are you an early riser for the yeah. market i'm um i get up at around about quarter to 5 uh, oh, every wow. morning um, okay. 
get straight on to uh, Forex Factory, check out the economic news, what's coming out within the, within the currencies. Um, have a look at Bloomberg, uh, see what the, um, the the equity markets have done in the Globex session. Yeah. Um, and then I'll have a look at the, then I'll jump on the charts, have a look, see if anything pops out at me. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, place trades accordingly. If there's nothing there, then I, I wait. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, typically, what, what sorts of indicators, if any, do you use? Uh, I mainly use the RSI. Yeah. Whereas, so I used, I've been taught to use that. A lot of the traders or professional traders within Online Trading Academy go go on about the RSI. Um, yeah. So I, I tend to just use that. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Maybe the moving averages as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are the main. Do you use the MACD at all? No. No, no, I don't. No. I don't tend to use that. Yeah, quite a lot of traders swear by that. Yeah, yeah, use it quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it'd probably be something that I'll use further down the line. But yeah, as I go on, I'm just trying to, you know, not overcomplicate things, and uh, use the ones that I know. Yeah, do you keep a journal of your trades? What you did, when, both good and bad. Yeah, um, so I've started journaling quite a lot actually. Um, there is a good uh, for my forex account. I use uh, myfxbook.com, which is handy because once you link it up to your Oanda account, for example, it automatically retrieves the data, and uh, you don't have to input anything. So any trade that you take, any losses that you incur, it will automatically be uploaded, and I can just go onto the website, have a look. Okay. But with my futures, yeah, I log I log that manually. So yeah, do you find that helps? Yeah. It, Definitely, you know, helps me see where I went wrong. Uh, just, you know, allows me to see if I followed all my rules, um, or if it was at a specific time during the day that my trade failed, or got me a got me a win, for example. Then I'll be able to see at this particular time it was good. Um, this particular time I hit a, a doldrum. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I do find the markets the the european market versus the american market really quite different i mean sometimes you'll you'll be working on well quite frequently in fact you, you're working on something that's working out in the morning uh and then along comes the american market at 2 30 it reverses it all yeah yeah it, it's quite weird <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can almost swear by it sometimes yeah you know whatever progress you've made is going to be reversed at 2 30 yeah yeah oh dear yeah i've come across that so yeah yeah odd one yeah do you think being a great trader is a, an innate skill? I mean, is it something we sort of kind of got a knack for most of, you know, the one when we're trading well, good traders, consistently profitable traders, I should say. So, I mean, I'm not sure really. I just think great traders, they're, yeah, like you said, they're consistent. But at the same time, a good trader or a great trader can be someone who's, you know, very disciplined and just taking small losses i think That's we sometimes thing, forget that yeah yeah you have to take you know sometimes people forget to be a great trader you have to be taking so much or uh, really large amounts of money but to be a good trader you know you have to follow your rules you have to you know discipline yourself you know dedicate time and just you know small losses as long as it's a, a win or you're not incurring losses then you, you know you're a good trader so that's what that's how I perceive yeah. it in my eyes. Um, so I don't have to be taking large amounts of money as long, you know, step by step. I'm increasing my account, then you know, fills me with more confidence. And yeah, like I said, I don't have to be taking large amounts yeah. of money. So, do you always pick a point where you will get out before you get in on a trade? Um, what do you mean for? Okay, so you know, you you see um, a chart that looks like a possible trade for you, and so you think, right, I'm I'm going in there and i also anticipate coming out here so that even before you take oh, yes. the trade you're kind of very conscious of how many you know maybe it's 100 yeah, hits yeah, or whatever 100%. it is i always go into a trade knowing you know where i'm going to get in when i'm going to get out and then i'll be happy with that even yeah. if the trade goes higher i know that that was my my target and i'm happy with that so do you ever set yourself a sort of minimum, right? You know, it's got to be at least 50 pips or 70 I tend to or do, or... you know, when, when I do my currency pairs, I tend to do like two targets. So, you know, I'll look to get a one-to-one -one uh, uh, exit 
and then I'll leave a, a another contract or another number of units running to maybe a three to one or even more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there anything you can single out as the most important element in deciding to put on a trade? Like, for example, market losing momentum, going the other way, whatever it might be. Is there something that is a typical sign for you to, to get in? Yeah, I mean, I always look for my zones. I always look for imbalance. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, proper positioning of my zones. And because I'm here all day and I trade um, at my computer all the time, so I look for certain signals when price gets into my zone. I look for price action, see what it's doing. And then only then, once I see certain formations, for example, or I will then place a trade based on that. Before, I used to, you know, obviously because I was working, I used to just set my zones and do a set and forget. And, I, you know, I got stopped out quite a few times doing that. So now I like to see price come into my zone, see what kind of reaction I get out of it, and then take the trade based on that. Um, so I look yeah. for certain triggers and signals within the zone. Yeah, and by zones, do you mean like the resistance sort of uh, oh, by, support Yeah, areas? supply and demand zones that I mark out. So I look for supply and demand zones, major imbalances, um, and then that's how I mark my zones out. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard of that sort of supply and demand term. Uh, how, what does that mean, really? Um, so supply and demand is just basically where there's an imbalance between the buyers and the sellers. I look for, you know, if I see a zone that has strong – candles moving out of the zone then you can tell that from that that's a strong imbalance but it has to coincide with the area of interest that i look at um, and these are all things that i've been taught with online trading academy um, so i'm okay I, I don't really trade support and resistance i just look for the supply and demand zones that's interesting i haven't come across that before i've started to incorporate the, the support um, and resistance only just now um, so I do tend to look at that, but then, you know, what I'll find is the support and resistant traders will trade at a certain price, but then, you know, often enough, you know, there'll be a supply of demand zone just below or above um, those lines, which I take. Do you look at, um, fundamental news as a, as a way of measuring how the chart's going to move that day? Uh, not, not, not really for currencies or, um, or, or futures. I just I just tend to use my technical analysis. Okay. I mean the fun, the fundamentals you could use for say stocks for example, but I don't really trade stocks due to the account size needed. Yeah, and it's so volatile, aren't they? I mean, they, you know. Yeah. Even the experts will yeah. be saying this stock is looking great, and then next week you see it's just dived. You know, it's it's very very difficult to yeah. know where things are going, especially at the moment. You know, it's just a bit mad, really. <laughs> yeah and I, you know also i just keep an eye on the news reports you know what's coming out for that particular day i'll tend to look at them yeah. throughout the day yeah and then just see if there's anything um there that's worth you know keeping an eye on so certain uh, speakers that come on and you know i know Tr trump likes to tweet a lot of stuff so i tend to look for the news reports the tweets yeah keep an eye on certain things like that but yeah exactly yeah but so when trading forex and looking at price action do you use historical price zones going months back or or weeks yes you know, the historical? Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so um i'll look at the, the, the zones on certain time frames i mean the higher time frames that i use are, are good zones they're usually the strongest zones yeah by that you mean like weekly possibly even monthly yeah 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 okay interesting because i like to see where, where price may turn yeah you know on the higher time frames price often turns at those higher time frames so yeah i look for them and then you know obviously i, I break down those zones and look you know on lower time frames to for refinement yeah, entry and so on. yeah yeah do you feel you get ground down occasionally as a, as a trader not even necessarily on account of the losses but if you like if you have a bad week the sort of sheer adrenaline and rush of it yeah yeah i sometimes you know being at this screen all day sometimes can have its effect on you I sometimes just yeah uh, yeah puts me in a stressed mood yeah. um and you know yeah, no one really wants to just sit at their desk all day watching trades do you manage to tear yourself away every now and then yeah sometimes yeah. i just tell myself you know just when i feel myself getting more more stressed out about certain trades not hitting or you know maybe incurring a loss i just say you know 
there's a time where I just say to myself, Newton, come on, just take some time out. Or if I have three losses in a day, then I'll just say that's it for the day. Um, we trade again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Not long ago, I had Louise Nonweiler on, on the show, uh, okay. a therapist, and she put me in touch with you. And uh, you said, you know, she'd found her, her courses and so on very, very useful. Uh, yes. So at what point did you get in touch with Louise? I actually had another trader that I met through the online trading academy reach out and say to me, you know, Louise is doing some great work. Why don't you give her a try? Because emotionally, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Um, yeah. You know, I'd be up one, you know, when my, my yeah, trade's then working for me and then down, I'd be yeah. suddenly down and, you know, trying to get in on trades you know, when I see big candle moves out of a particular zone and then, you know, for only, you know, for it to turn against me and go back down the other way. So yeah, it's like a branch you bend back and it let go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, yeah. when I took this, you know, when I went on this journey, I've always wanted to, to learn everything about it. So, and that's even the psychological side of things. So yeah. Louise has helped me immensely. And obviously with the course courses that she's doing, and the one-to-one sessions um, and the recordings she provided me, it helped me a lot. Yeah. Now, now I'm not so bothered if I, if I incur a loss, I'm, I'm not bothered at all. Obviously you don't want to have that, but I just move on to the next. Yeah. And then you're calmer I, I, in yourself. Yeah. yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, you know, I'm comfortable with, you know, the risk that I put and if it works for me, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, you can live to fight another day tomorrow or whatever and yeah, get that yeah. back. So, so when did you start the course with, Louise? Um, probably about a year ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you, did like a block of sessions? Yeah. Yeah. I, blo- I blocked her out for about 10 sessions. Yeah. And we okay. slowly just went through everything that I was having troubles with and where I want to be. And then she sort of created certain, you know, her content or her recordings around that. And uh, hypnotherapy sessions are brilliant. So it's helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She's doing wonderful things now at the moment, actually. She's she's very busy, so. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. No, it was yeah. great talking with her. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. And what about yourself, Nick, if you don't mind me asking that? Yeah, how me. You, how, how are you getting on with the? Very, uh, very up and down. Sadly, a bit more down than, <laughs> than up recently. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Um, you know, is it emotional? Is it the markets? It's probably a combination of the two. I'm finding... I'm finding it harder, even though I know more, to to make a consistent gain each week. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite yeah. sure what that is. Um, maybe I'm overcomplicating things. It's, you know, you, I suppose you you take on new ideas, and sometimes they cause a certain amount of confusion because they slightly clash with what you had before, yes, and then yes. and then you're you're not you're not quite sure of plan A or plan B. Uh, yeah, so yeah. you know you, you, that leads you to panic. Uh, more quickly uh, so you know you see a loss and you go oh god you know the last time that happened it, it really hurt tonight I'm going to close it and then next thing you know an hour later it's up you know all down whichever you want you know yeah 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 um, they say know. that's uh, paralysis by analysis when you <laughs> overcomplicate <laughs> yeah, yeah I've quite been possibly. there yeah yeah no it's uh, I think all, all, all traders go through that don't they um, yeah it, it's, it's, it's trying to find something that that reduces not just the stress, but that kind of volatility within your own performance, you know, that inconsistency yeah, um, and the way you react to things. And of course, sometimes you overreact, you know, the, the revenge trade is typical yes. of, of a lot of us, isn't it? You know, we sort yes. of go down, ah, oh, yeah, but I, I know it's going to be <laughs> right this time. And, <laughs> and it's not, Yeah, <laughs> you've just doubled down on your losses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. I think uh, another thing as well, Nick, is uh, the pressure you put on yourselves. Um, yeah. I've just, you know, I've yeah, just, there's that. Yeah. I've become more laid back. I mean, to learn, you know, trading is never easy, or it's not easy. I, I mean, because if it was, everyone would be doing. Yeah, it. yeah. So I've d- I've taken more I've taken a more laid back approach, and so I'm not putting so much pressure on myself. Before I was like, right. You know, I need to make this. I need to do it. now. I'm just like, right. We'll see what how the week pans out. If I get wins, then great. If I don't, then we just work on what what went wrong. So, yeah, having that approach just sort of helps. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you know, we talk of journals and analyzing what went wrong and so on. 
the strangest thing I find is that, you know, you're learning all these new lessons. And they do help, but then there's mm. always another new lesson to learn. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, it's sort of, uh, you know, infinite really, almost, you know, the, there's so many computations that uh, you wonder if, when, at what point will you, you kind of get all of them or enough of them so that you have a strategy that, you know, is, is, is going to keep you in profit, even if it's a modest profit, you know. I found that, you know, I mean, I've enrolled on many courses with certain instructors and they all teach different things. I just find taking something away from those courses will help me build some sort of tool belt. So if a certain strategy is not working, then I can maybe revert back to something that I know that may work. Yeah. Um, so having sort of a skill set or a tool belt of a number, you know, a load of strategies is always beneficial. Mm, definitely, yeah. Is the fun aspect still there? I mean, you know, you say you you are passionate about it. Do you do you manage to sort of conjure up some fun quite easily on some most days? Yeah, I, I mean, I have fun with the markets all the time. I'm like I said, I'm passionate about it. It's what I want to do now. It's what or what it what I am doing at the moment. So, yeah, it's just, it's very interesting. Why do you think this is what makes you passionate? What is unique about this kind of challenge instead of something else? What, what is it that drives you? For me, it's just you know you've, you you're learning a skill to make money for life, um, that that spurs me on, um, and I'm sort of very I'm not I wouldn't say money driven, but everyone likes to make money, so that's that's where the markets come in. You know, if you you could spend ten minutes on a on a trade and, and make your your daily your daily win for for the day so it's it's quick and easy and then it allows you it gives you that time and freedom to go and do other stuff yeah uh working in before in in, within the it industry it was for me it was very stressful right yeah long Uh, hours coming home some you know yeah long hours sometimes starting at six in the morning finishing at 12 at night and and then you know i nearly you know i came to a point where i nearly had a burnout and i just thought i can't i don't want to do this anymore so when when did you move to switzerland no, you said five um, years. Five, was it five, five yeah. years ago? Yeah. And, and was it because yeah. of a job offer, and you just thought, well, yeah, my friend, my my friend called me up. He just basically said, "There's a contract role uh, in in Switzerland for a Schindler. Do you want to do it?" I just jumped at it and really enjoyed the country, yeah. the way of living. And then I just, you know, p- uh, applied for the uh, full time position, and you know, fortunately enough, I got it, and just yeah, lived here ever since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In trading. Uh, is one of the things that appeals to you the fact that you're kind of on well you're on your own it's you versus not versus exactly but you know what i mean against the market you it's just it's between you and the market you don't have to report to bosses you don't have to get involved in office politics it's just it's kind of there is a sort of purity about yeah. it you yeah you're, you're, you're your own yeah. boss you know you're in charge of yeah how much money you, you, you you're going to make for that particular day and you know, I, I I prefer that. So, yeah. How important is gut feeling in trading? Well, I don't know really. I, I, my gut feeling has got me into a lot of trouble in the past. So <laughs> yeah. I just, I stick yeah. to my uh, my technical analysis, and then that way I know I've done everything right. And if it doesn't work out, it's just a trade that hasn't worked out. But if I go by my gut feeling, then you know it would be going against all the rules that I've uh, set out. So I don't really tend to go on my gut feeling. Yeah. So you've mentioned the course you were on, and then you obviously you know look at the news and what have you. Are there, are there any newsletters or other websites you pay close attention to? Um, yeah, I mean, there's the CME.com where I go on. There's a Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Okay, why that one? Um, just purely for the futures products. It's got uh, untold amounts of information there. And obviously with futures contracts, they roll over. So it's good to see what contracts they're trading at, you know, the amount of volume. Um, yeah. So they have, it's, it's just, they have everything there, all the information that I need um, for the products that I trade. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's any other, I mean, there's barchart.com. There's, there's loads. Yeah. Yeah. That I go yeah. on. Do you have a different technique with as between futures and forex or are you applying pretty much the same rules pretty much the same rules yeah. um so yeah i mean what i've been taught works for all asset classes and with futures and forex i tend to just stick to the same i don't go and 
try and trade differently for either asset. Yeah, yeah. How did you hear about the online course? Was that just sort of word of mouth or just browsing around? Yeah. Going back to what I said, when my friend asked me to you know invest or look at some something that can help him generate profit on the side it was just it just i put it into google literally put it into google there was online trading academy and uh, it was the first first one that came up and it was a free free day session okay. so i enrolled on that and then from then i was just like right this is the course that i'm going to take and never look back yeah yeah are you, are you still doing those classes yeah they're, they're 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 for life. I can take them as many times as I want. If I'm having trouble on a particular a particular aspect, I can go back and look for when the next available course is, or I can attend the extended learning tracks, which they have on every day. And I and you know you have various professional uh, instructors that you could just reach out to via email and just ask them to look at look at your certain trades. They're, they're, so it's they're really good. Okay, and. So is there a sort of live, live aspect to that um, in, in as much you, you perhaps can go online when they're trading live and they show you what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they I mean, all the classes are live. And okay. so they just, they just pick out certain trade ideas that they have. Obviously, you take those trade based on your, your technical analysis. They don't say, right, take this, it's going to work. Um, you have to be comfortable with it. You know, maybe the, the size of the zone is too big for your for your account size. So uh, they just they just ping out trade ideas for you to to possibly look at, and along with that, they give you the information of why they've taken or why they've picked that particular zone. Yeah, and then so you're getting the the, the information as well as the, why they're sort of giving you that info uh, that zone. What advice could you give a novice trader or or even a, a trader who's sort of going through a a nasty losing streak um for me i would say to don't give up there'll be there'll be times where you just think oh this is not working um but you need to really home in on your skills if that means spending two three hours a day learning a particular strategy then you need to do it um also your risk management that needs to be on point um because you see a lot of traders blowing up their accounts because of poor risk management. So you need to be comfortable with, with you know, what it is you, you know, the amount of loss losses per week, for example, or how much or X amount on a particular trade. You need to be comfortable with that. You need to manage your risk. Um, and I would just say to to really dedicate yourself to learning it um, because it's not easy. Uh, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So yeah. I've, with this pandemic that's going on, Nick, I've managed to utilize my time effectively and just really, really, you know, hit the ground running and just learn as much as possible. Because, I'm, you know, it could be that I go back to work. You know, you never know. If 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 a good job comes across my way, then maybe I might take it. So yeah. I'm just utilize, utilizing the time effectively and making sure that I, I, I learn everything I attend every class that interests me and, yeah uh, i take notes i'm very diligent <laughs> yeah diligent yeah. i have so many notes on certain strategies it's you know i can always revert back to that so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. When, when you've had sort of bad weeks do you sometimes think right just take a break and go and just study for a while and yeah 100%. You know, maybe a demo account for i don't know a yeah. week or something do you, yeah yeah you think it's a good 100%. Idea? yeah i mean there's there's no point you have to have the right frame of mind. So if you are on the back of a, a heavy losing streak, then it, for me personally, it doesn't make sense that I carry on trading. Yeah, so it like gets a like, foggy head, really, almost. Yeah, yeah, you sort of when you when you have that sort of losing streak, sometimes you, well, me, I've sort of forgotten what what I've been taught. So I, I'll probably go back to sim trading for a week and then just try things out again, just start again and refresh the refresh the mind. So yeah. Maybe you call it of, sim trading. Sorry, what, what was that? Simulated trading. So Simula- I call it okay, sim, right, yeah. Sim trading, like a de- yeah. demo, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, and just to build up your confidence there, seeing, seeing yeah. You know, yeah, refreshing the strategy that works and getting some good results and then going back into the live, yeah. Yeah, I, f- I find that taking some time out gives you that drive to go back in the markets again. Yeah. So if I'm, you know, if I'm on the back of some losing streaks, I'll say, right, that's it for the week. I'm going to spend two weeks learning uh, the strategy, 
or I'll spend two weeks just attending classes and then I won't trade at all. And then when I come back, then I've got that 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 drive again to go back in. On yeah, the a bit more confidence. You've got the sort of yeah. the evidence that you the proof that you need to build yeah. that confidence. You're not just sort of telling yourself, you've actually seen that you, you can get back into it and make things yes. work. Yeah. That's really yeah. important, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Cool. So how's your week been so far? I had uh, yeah, good week. Wednesday, good. very profitable on the ES. Uh, the S&P, sorry. So yeah. uh week before that, again, very profitable um, on the ES. I'm taking advantage of some of these volatile moves. So, yeah, very good. Very good. What would you make of the indices at the moment? Um, we're now uh, early October. Do, do you, you know, a lot of people have been talking about a crash on S&P and uh, the NASDAQ. I mean, they did slump quite significantly yeah. only yeah, a couple of yeah. weeks ago. Um, do you think that, is going to happen again or we seem to be pushing back up so i mean a few down days as as always but um seems to be pushing back up on both is that do you think that's likely to keep going up as we head toward the uh, u.s election um i hope so mm. i hope so um <laughs> banking on it <laughs> yeah i'm banking on it yeah. um i don't see it you know hopefully not going down too far i think there's it's in a correction at the moment yeah. Um, but I think the markets will pull back before the elections. I'm hoping they do anyway. So. You think because of this pack, new package that is, you know, they're, they're arguing over it, but I can't see them not pushing it through. I mean, you know, it would be such yeah. a huge <laughs> collapse if, if they didn't. Yeah. So are you trading this morning? Are you taking a break? You obviously took an hour out for talking to me. But No, I've, I've sort of had, the, had a good win on Wednesday. Um, okay, so I'm yeah. take, I've just decided to take two days off. Good, yeah. Just spend some time, you know, going for walks. Uh, yeah. Are you out there with family, wife, girlfriend? No, really? no, no. I'm very much on my own. So yeah, all my no. family's back in England, which is which is tough. So yeah, I bet yeah, yeah. Especially at the moment because you can't just hop on a plane quite no. easily, can you? No. no, I haven't seen them for around about a year now. So oh, damn, it's yeah. difficult. And my brother's just had a little. Uh, well, he had a girl. Yeah, she's two now, and she's growing up quickly. So it's it's difficult when you don't get to see him grow up. So yeah, yeah. Well, we should wrap it up there. So thanks very much for talking to me. No, um, thanks, Nick. Really yeah. appreciate coming on the show. Yeah, um, likewise. Yeah, very good. And I wish you uh, all the best in your trading uh, journey. Yeah, and thanks feel free so to reach out if you need anything from me. So yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right, Nick. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye. I was talking just now to Milton Fernandez. I'm Nicholas Penrake and you've been listening to A Trader's Life. If you've enjoyed the conversation today, please check out previous episodes and conversations with other traders from around the world. You can find those at atraderslife.buzzsprout.com, iTunes, Spotify and Stitcher.